train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about workout programs. And every once in a while I get some people asking me about their workout program. They might outline a few things that they're doing or they might talk about somebody's workout program. And just so you know, just so you know for sure, okay, I, I do not look at other people's workout programs. I don't follow YouTubers. I don't order their program and analyze it and whether I should try it or not. I, I just do my own thing. It's worked for me and I understand my body and, and that's what I do. So first of all, don't ask me about other people's programs. <laughs> God, I feel good. You guys must be sending me some good vibes out there. I don't know what it is, but man, I feel pretty good. Shout out to Eric Wong. Hope your uh, recovery is going well with your pec tear, man. Second of all, I find there's this mass fear that people have of trying new things. And only through trying new things will you discover what type of workout really works well for you at this time. And, and like I said, you become your own worst hypocrite because sometimes the workout program that works great for you today might not be the same workout that will work for you tomorrow. Maybe right now you find a whole body workout is the best type of workout for you, but maybe next year it's a three day split. You're working a body part only once a week or twice a week, you know, so it always changes. So it's really important for you to be open and, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid about whether a program is perfect for you or not. And when you try that new program, just really honestly assess what's happening and ask yourself, are you improving or not? Is your strength going up? Are you able to do more reps with a certain weight than you could before? These are signs that your workout program is working. Sasha, I hope you're sticking to your nutrition program. You gotta be on stage, man. Hey, I know you're watching. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's no one perfect program or technique. It's just about what is the perfect technique for you now and what is working for you right now in this moment. And there is a tendency on the internet right now for people to oversimplify where they say, oh, I'm an ectomorph or I'm an endomorph and I should train this way or I'm tall or I'm short and I should train this way. That's an oversimplification of something much more complicated than that. There's a lot more variables going on than whether you are tall or whether you are short or whether you're an ectomorph or an endomorph. I've seen ectomorphs totally respond differently. You take two ectomorphs, you put them in the same type of workout program, they totally respond differently. One guy might respond to more power type training with less frequency, and another guy might respond to high frequency training. There was a guy the other day that was telling me that he has to go really low frequency uh, training because he's an ectomorph. Well, one of my best friends actually used to have to train super frequent and he had a super fast metabolism, totally skinny. So yeah, it just depends on the situation. As far as my arms come, they do this, maybe I can get them more. But while keeping the chest out, I can't come back any further. While keeping the chest out, I can't come back any further. It's just like this. If I want to come back further, I have to do this. That's not training back. That's training shoulders and messing around with your lower back and you could screw something up, but it's taking the stress off the lats, actually. So you just need to understand that you're a much more complicated being than just a couple characterizations. You know, some people like they just oversimplify themselves and oversimplify their situation. So the only way around this is to experiment. See what is working for you now and don't become a fanatic about it because what's working for you now, like I said, might change and then you'll be made to eat your words a year or two from now, right? <laughs> now you might be asking, Jason, why don't you go all the way forward when you see the rope? Well, I will tell you, I don't do that because then you round the lower back a bit. If you're rounding the lower back to get that extra lat stretch, your lower back's taking some stress and at the same time, you're not necessarily getting more back work from that, as much as Arnold Schwarzenegger does that kind of technique. When I tried that technique with Ben Overrose a long time ago, I started to get some lower back problems because I was rounding that lower back too much. So it depends if you're genetically built for it or not, but it's not necessarily the recommended technique. So another example of this oversimplification of uh, workout or bodybuilding understanding is I just had a guy down below, uh, he asked me, he, he bought one of my programs and he said, Jason, I noticed that you have some pretty high rep ranges in this program, you know, somewhere around 15 to 20 something reps. And uh, I'm gonna be cutting up pretty soon, so am I gonna lose all my muscle? Will this be effective for me to keep my muscle? And I can see where this thinking is coming from. He's probably thinking that high reps are just good for cutting and low reps are good for building muscle, but the thing is that is again it's it's just an oversimplification and a lack of understanding of really how to build muscle most of my muscle was built with over 10 reps type training although i do incorporate the heavy days as well right so with a lot of my training programs out there when i'm getting people used to a certain frequency or they're starting with an a program i may start with a little bit of higher rep ranges just for safety reasons but that does not mean that a person will not gain muscle that way i just had a guy uh, the testimony is on my website he just told me that he, for the first time ever in his life after using my program he got his arms over 18 inches and he never could his entire life and he was a strong dude okay i'm just gonna do three sets of partial rep bicep just to keep that tension on there and then i go to full rep right so uh, it's something I'm just playing around with lately. First, you want to start the lighter weight, of course. 
So I'm gonna give you a general rule, very general rule, okay? But in my experience, not from my reading, but in my experience, if you hit failure with a muscle group in a set and that set lasts less than a minute long, chances are it's going to be very effective in building muscle. And as you can see, there can be many different rep ranges within that minute. Isometrics once in a while here. Isometric, we're holding the weight. So the rep range can vary quite a bit. I mean, anywhere from a couple reps or one rep to 50 something reps you can have within a period of a minute, depending on the rep speed, right? And rep speed is also another factor to incorporate and to change around. Sometimes you do slow reps, sometimes you do fast reps. And that's why right now I am doing some isometrics as well, because isometrics will also give a different type of stimulus to the muscle. But the thing is, if you hit failure within a minute, and sometimes a little bit outside a minute, and in some cases up to two minutes, you're still anaerobic, you're still doing anaerobic activity, and anything anaerobic will still stimulate the muscle to grow. So hit failure within two minutes, you're gonna grow. So yeah, I hope this helps you out with your training. Just don't be afraid to change things up and to try new things. And as long as you're hitting failure or close to, or you're challenging the actual tissue, you're going to grow. You know, just try to get better in different ways and that muscle will grow. So thanks a lot for tuning in and thanks a lot for watching and make sure you share my stuff. That's right, share the stuff. Okay, take care for now.